Hey, it's Evan from Octane Electrons. Um, today we're gonna try and repair a speedometer odometer unit on a uh, 2001 Polaris Sportsman 500. So uh, this is my quad. It's in real nice shape, but the uh, the speedo is totally dead. So um, usually what happens on these things is the voltage regulator fails or the battery fails and the charging system pushes the voltage up too high. Um, takes out a bunch of lights, uh, light bulbs, and it can often kill this uh, speedometer unit. So a lot of times they can be repaired by replacing a couple of the transistors inside that do some of the voltage regulation. So uh, we're going to take it apart and see if that'll work. Might, might not, but it's dead anyway, so might as well try. Um, pretty sure that's what happened here because this thing has a lot of other blown bulbs on it. Um, so anyways, it's worth a shot. Um, to start, you need to get it out. I've already removed it, but I'll show you how. The headlight pod comes off with three screws. You have one at the back here, one on either side of the headlight. So I've already removed them. Um, then you can kind of flip this over and your Speedo will have two plugs on it that just have little clips, very easy to remove. There are these guys hanging here. So you can just lift up on the little thumb clip and pull the uh, plug back off. And then the Speedo sits in the hole here and has those two threaded studs with a nut on them. And those go through this uh, bracket that sits on the back. So you just remove the nuts, they're eight millimeter nuts. Um, and then you can slide it out and it comes out really easily. And then I just put the nuts back on there. Okay, so I have it off, and I'll show you the first step is um, you have to get the surround off of it. So this black uh, aluminum is the surrounding piece. So I'm using a screwdriver, and I'm just working around the edge and kind of prying gently around it to try and push it off. So you see I've started, but I haven't made a ton of progress yet. So just be real gentle hold the unit in your hand and then you can use a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry against the plastic here and just work your way around and uh, and pry it away so I'm gonna keep doing that and then uh, show you once I have it apart okay so here's the cover off and you see I just pried the edges up so the top will still look fine but there's a little bit of damage from prying at the back and uh, there's the rubber seal and the glass all together. Okay, here's the speedo. I'm gonna remove the push button. And then I need to remove the needle. Um, you can use, try and just pit, lift it off straight up with your fingers. Um, if you have to, you could put down some cardboard on either side and try and lift underneath it evenly and like pop it off that way. So I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna try a couple things and see what gets the needle off uh, without breaking it. So we'll do that, and then the next step, um, I believe, have to lift up the cover, and there's a screw under here that holds the unit in place. So we'll look at that next. Okay, I was easily able to remove the needle with my fingers. I just uh, grabbed real tight underneath uh, on each side and just pulled straight up, so you can maybe see it. The knob inside is still in good shape, and I didn't crack the plastic. Okay, so put that over there. Okay, now next step is to get this off. I believe there's a screw right under here and I need to lift up the face a little bit. So I'm gonna uh, figure that out and then I'll show you, just a sec. Okay, so I used a, a small flathead screwdriver right under the edge of the face and I was able to lift it up easily and then you can see the Phillips screw in there. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver on it and get that removed. Okay, so I got that one removed and then there's two more. There's one at about the 10 and one at about the 40. So I lift that up, you can see the one at about 10. And right there at 40, you can see the kind of glint of the edge of the other one. So you just lift them up with the, the face up with the small flathead and then get a Phillips on there and remove the screws. So I'm gonna do the other two. Okay, here you can see my screwdriver on the screw, the last one at the 40 position. So I'm gonna remove that and then the whole inner unit should come out. Okay, I didn't mention that there's also one screw here on the back, right there. So I removed that. 
and then you can just use a screwdriver I've already popped it out but you can use a screwdriver and just press down against the pins and the connectors that stick through right here they're just kind of silicone in place to keep moisture out and then doing that will cause the unit to just pop out of the shell um, you should have two of these little packs in here that keep uh, like keep moisture uh, pulled away from the electronics they're just kind of sit in here in these little barrel locations so there was one the other one fell out here so we'll move that out of the way and move the other one okay so there we go now I have my board out let me take a look at it and then I'll show you a little closer what happened okay so after looking at this um, <laughs> it became clear that I was missing a component. There was pads here for a transistor that is what I was expecting to have failed and it wasn't even there and after looking back at my housing I've already shaken it loose but it was actually melted in let me move it now I'm sure it's toast you can see where it actually got so hot it melted into the plastic of the housing that was stuck here um, so it actually got hot enough to melt its um, uh, solder <laughs> and come out uh, of the board. So anyways, um, this is probably the root cause of the problem is this power transistor. So I will get a new one and replace that. I, um, I actually decided to go ahead and just replace the transistor. Um, the first thing I did actually was reinstall the original transistor that had fallen out. Um, just to see if it still worked and it did not it was toasted Bad. so I actually pulled another um, Transistor out of an old power supply that I had any of these type of transistors should be pretty much replaceable for that that part so I grabbed uh, one here out of this old power supply and Soldered it in and I tested on the quad and everything works great I'll go plug it in temporarily and show you but uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it like that and put it back together. And if I get some more life out of it, that'll be great. Okay, so I just have it temporarily plugged in here. But uh, go ahead and turn my key on. And I get backing lights on my Speedo again. This thing was totally dead before. Let me turn the headlight off. So yeah, I've got it on. Um, I don't have, uh, I haven't tested it completely yet, but everything looks good and another good sign is my all-wheel drive light on the switch was dead before and now So now my all-wheel drive works again correctly um, without the bypass that was there before. So when the Speedo had failed in the past, somebody had bypassed it by, uh, I think, jumping the two brown wires together. So anyways, I've already removed their bypass and I'm just going to insulate where they were shorted together. So anyways, hope that helps. Um, I'm going to put it back together the way that I took it apart and get it back on there. And um, yeah, anyways, that's it. But. It worked in this case, so you might as well give it a shot and see if you can save yourself some money. Alright, here it is. Working great again. WD light working again, speed is working. So great. Anyways, that's how you do it. My reverse override works. Alright, hope this helps.